All right, so uh, the next type of energy that we're gonna look at is called gravitational potential energy, EG. So energy, E stands again for energy, and G stands for gravitational. And that is the energy an object has uh, because of its height. And so our formula for gravitational potential energy is, well, we have EG is equal to mass times G, which again is our 9.8, uh, how much? times how much height you have. Or sometimes you just have a change in height. And so what we have is, this is pretty much the same formula as delta EG, which delta just again in math and science stands for change. Uh, your mass is not gonna change, your G is not, not gonna change, but you could have a change in height, so it's delta H. So there's our two formulas again, uh, M, uh, M is the mass. All right, uh, H is the height. And again, our G value is 9.8. All right, now, for example, uh, consider a box being lifted from a shelf to another, one shelf to another, I guess you should say. Assume the distance between the shelves is 50 centimeters. If the height of the first shelf is 1.25 meters, uh, find the potential energy of the box uh, when it is on the first shelf. All right, so our first shelf here is again at a height of 1.25 meters. All right, and so again, if I'm looking for the gravitational potential energy, our EG, all right, so that's what we're looking for. Uh, we are looking for, we're gonna, see, what else do we have here? A box, that's our mass is 20 kilograms. Uh, our height of that first shelf, uh, 1.25 meters. All right, and so I'm going to use that formula we have up there, EG is equal to MGH. And so our gravitational potential energy, uh, we're gonna have our mass, which is 20, 20 kilograms. Uh, again, our G value, 9.8. And our height is 1.25. All right, so uh, with this formula, all I need to do is multiply my three numbers. And let's see here, I end up with uh, 245. And again, because we're talking about energy, we are looking at joules. All right, now, uh, next situation here with our box. Uh, part B, find the gravitational potential energy of the box after it has been moved to the second shelf. All right. Now, uh, so all our values are pretty much the same except for our height. So the height, uh, we started off at uh, 1.25 meters, all right? But then we're adding 50 centimeters. That's a bit of a problem, right? Because I have to, again, have everything in the same unit. So again, I need to convert it to our standard units of meters. So uh, I take 50 centimeters and I divide it by 100, I get 0.5 meters. All right, and so if I add, let's see here, my 1.25, uh, 2.5, I end up with a height of 1.75. All right, so uh, that's our new height that's on the second shelf because each shelf is 50 centimeters apart. So again, when I find my EG, I get uh, mass times gravity times the height. And so our number should be bigger than it was 245 because, uh, we, again, we've gone higher, more gravitational potential energy. All right, so I have my 20 times my 9.8, uh, then my new height here is 1.75 meters. And again, when I multiply my three numbers, let's see here what I get, I got another round number here, 743 joules. And again, it's bigger than it was before because we've gone higher up. Now, uh, let's see here, find the work uh, moving the box from the first shelf uh, to the second shelf. All right, so work, again, these are related. It's how much energy did you make a change? So work is going to equal our delta E. Whoops, delta E, I'll use hashtag for delta because I don't have a, a little triangle here on my keyboard. And that's going to be equal to, you take your first gravitational potential energy or your second, I should say, your final one, which is right here, EG2, and this would be our EG1. And so we finished 
with uh, EG2 amount of gravitational potential energy. And we started off with EG1, which is the amount of gravitational potential energy we had initially being on the first shelf. All right. And so uh, again, we had 343, 343 joules that we ended up with. Because we were on the first shelf, we started off with 245 joules of energy. And the amount of work it took uh, to move that from the first shelf to the second shelf uh, is 98 joules. And that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is that when I'm finding my change in energy, well, again, I could use mg and then just a delta h which again, the mass of this box is 20 kilograms. Uh, gravity is still 9.8. And our change uh, in gravitational potential energy is we just moved it up 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters. Now, if I multiply those three numbers, I get 98 joules. I get the same answer. So there's a couple of ways to figure that out. I could either look at the change in the height and do a formula, but the sense, uh, because I knew what energy I finished with and what I started with, I just decided to subtract the numbers. Again, two ways to look at that, uh, but it, in the end, you get the same answer. All right, let's see here. Oh, that's no D here. So uh, we get to example two. A gas-powered winch, winch on a rescue helicopter does 4,200 joules of work while lifting a 50 kilogram swimmer at a constant speed up from the ocean. Through what height uh, was the swimmer lifted? All right, so again, I'm gonna write down my variables that I know. The amount of work put in here was 4,200 or 200 joules, which I could say that that is going to be the change in gravitational potential energy. All right, uh, what else do we know here? The mass of the swimmer is equal to 50 kilograms. All right, and we are interested in the height. All right, so I'm going to uh, see what, what we have here. So uh, the amount of work done, well, we'll get our formula down here. So my change in gravitational potential energy uh, is equal to mg and delta h. All right, so I know that this Winch uh, supplied 4,200 joules of energy it did to lift this swimmer directly up. The mass of the swimmer is 50 kilograms. Again, G is 9.8. And uh, we're looking for the change in height, which is, uh, well, you're in the water and you're going up, so we're going to figure out how far they got lifted up. All right, so just uh, simplifying things here. I got my 4,200. Uh, 50 times 9.8. I end up with, again, nice round number, 490 and delta H. All right, uh, I want to figure out what the change in the height was, how far this swimmer got lifted. And so I'm going to divide both sides by 490. All right, so there we go. And so those 490s cancel each other out. And so our delta H, delta H, Let's see, I take 4,200 and uh, divide it by 490, and I end up with 8 uh, point, let's see here, 5, 7. And again, because we're in our standard unit here, we are talking, and we're Canadian here, we're talking about meters. So that's how far the swimmer got lifted up. All right, let's see here, uh, let's a few more. A weightlifter deadlifts a loaded barbell uh, 0.8 meters, okay? Uh, the lift increases the gravitational potential energy of the barbell by 490 joules. Determine the mass of the barbell. Okay, so again, I'm going to write down my information here. Uh, the height, you know, the gate there, it says it lifted it up uh, 0.8 meters, all right? Uh, the change in energy or how it increases its energy, I can look at it either way. Uh, delta EG uh, is equal to 490 joules. Uh, we want to look at how heavy is that barbell? 
All right, so uh, let's see here. So our gravitational potential energy, delta EG or EG, it's basically the same thing. Uh, we have MGH. All right, so uh, again, 490 joules, how much energy it's been increased. We want to know the mass. Uh, we got a 9.8 here, and our height we do know is 0 0.8. All right. All right, just simplifying things. So uh, I'm going to, let's see, I got that 490. I can't do anything with that. Uh, 9.8 times 0 0.8. Ooh, okay, uh, do some calculations. I end up getting 7.84. And again, that's times mass. When you're multiplying, you can put the numbers in any order. So when I figured out 9.8 times 0 0.8, uh, I know it's a number, so I just put it up front. All right, and then lastly, well, I want to get the mass here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7.84. All right, what I do to one side, I got to do the other here. And uh, my mass, let's see here, we end up with 490 divided by 7.84. And it looks like it is oh, 62. Again, go to two decimal places, 0.5. And because we're in our standard units here, we are looking at kilograms which is about uh, roughly about 150 pounds, somewhere in there. This person's deadlifting. All right. Uh, we don't, oh, we got one more here. Ah, an astronaut uh, with their suit on who's standing on the top shelf, of the, which is a height of 2.2 meters here on the lunar module on Earth, has a gravitational potential energy of 17,060, uh, or sorry, 1,768 joules. Find the mass again. All right, so we're, uh, again, right now what I got here, uh, we're at a height of 2.2 meters. All right, for this person, uh, their EG, gravitational potential energy, is 1,768 joules. Uh, we are looking for the mass. All right, so let's check it out. Uh, again, EG is equal to MGH. Substitute in our numbers here, we get uh, 1,768 joules of gravitational potential energy. Again, we're finding the mass. Uh, we'll put a 9.8 in here for our G value, and our H is 2.2. All right, well, just like the last time, uh, last example, I'm going to take my 9.8 and times it by 2.2, and then again, multiplying in any order here. So I got 21.56, and again, times our mass. And let's see here. So I divide both sides by this 21.56. All right. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. Okay. So those divide each other out. And let's see. The mass of our astronaut is, uh, oh, I get a round number here. I'm getting 82 kilograms which is probably about 100 and, eh, 180 pounds. There is actually uh, limits when you're talking about astronauts and how big they can be and how tall they can be because they got to fit in a spaceship. So it's the one time where somebody short like me uh, has an advantage. <laughs> All right, now we get to B. If on the same step, the astronaut has a gravitational potential energy of 294 joules after landing on the moon, not moon, Find the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. Okay, so check this out. So this is a little bit different in that this time we're on the moon, same, same person here. Our gravitational potential energy is 294 joules. Uh, again, this person is on the same step, so it's uh, 2.2 meters. We know the mass now of this, this astronaut is 82 kilograms. Here's what we're finding now. We're finding the G value for the moon. All right. So uh, we're going to use the same formula here. EG is equal to MGH. All right. I'm going to substitute in my numbers here. So 294 joules of uh, energy. And uh, again, the mass of this astronaut is 82 kilograms. We're trying to find the G value. And uh, again, the height of this lunar module is 2.2 meters. All right. So now when I am... Um, Simplifying here, again, as I mentioned, uh, when you're multiplying, you can do it in any order. And so I'm going to take 82 and times it by 2.2. .2. 
And let's see, I get uh, 180.4, and again, times G. Again, this G value is the G on the moon. We've always talked about 9.8 uh, because we're on Earth, but uh, the moon's got a different one because it's a smaller planet. All right, so I'm going to divide both sides by 180.4. So what I do to one side here, I'm going to do the other. All right, so again, these divide each other out, and our G value on the moon, and this is true, didn't make this up, this is the actual G value, is I take 294 and I divide it by 180.4, and the G value on the moon is 1.63, and again, we're talking about the acceleration due to gravity, so it's meters per second squared, and that is actually the G value on the moon and that is why things float on the moon. Ours is 9.8 on Earth, and the moon is 1.63. And so uh, our gravity is like five times the moon, roughly because the gravity, the G value of a planet is based on its size and its, its density. And the moon is basically made of the same material as Earth, but uh, it's five times smaller. And that's why gravity on the moon is five times less. All right, so that is our gravitational potential energy.